Over the past three months, I've been completely changed by three queer memoirs. Uh, no Ashes in Fire by Darnell Moore, I Can't Date Jesus by Michael, Ars by Michael Arsenio, and now How We Fight for Our Lives by Saeed Jones. I followed Jones on Twitter long before I decided to pick up his novel. I found that he had recently moved to Columbus, and I, as had I this past summer, and his tweets were hilarious. His novel was being mentioned regularly on book lists towards the end of 2019, so I promised myself it would be one of my first reads of the year. Walking into an independent bookstore on a Saturday a few months ago, the book was sitting right there staring at me, basically calling out for me to spend $26 on it. Took another week for me to get around to actually cracking the book open, but something told me that once I started, I would not be able to stop. Around two hours later, I tweeted, just finished how we fought for our lives. Wow, just wow. I honestly didn't know if I would be able to piece together all of the words to properly review this novel. So please excuse the rambling disguise as an introduction, but I always feel the need to meticulously describe the events that lead to me reading books. I have a very complicated process. Um, sometimes I'll hold a book for months before I actually pick it up and read it. Um, it's just when the timing is right. But somehow How We Fight for Our Lives manages the difficult task, the very difficult task, of summarizing what it is like to be Black and queer in America, while also giving us un a unique look into one man's painful life experiences and his path to healing. The Black queer experience is an it's, it's a unique one. Um, coming from all different walks of life, neighborhoods, family structures, socioeconomic statuses, and religions, somehow we all have a story to tell about our mother. I come from a sect of gay boys who snuck and tried on her heels when she wasn't home. Saeed Jones' relationship with his mother is the crux of this memoir. And so after discovering a photo of a man in her copy of James Baldwin's Another Country, his mother revealed to him that she once had a close friend that had died from HIV AIDS. They used to go on road trips together. In the novel, he says, gay men dying of AIDS, like it was a logical sequence of events, a, a mathematical formula or a life cycle, caterpillar, cocoon, butterfly, gay boy, gay man. And this is an association that still drives so much misinformation, prejudice, and violence towards queer folk. You can hear how much he loves his mother and how she loves him with the same ferocity, but you can almost smell the fear and uneasiness that seems to penetrate every conversation where he attempts to discuss his sexuality with her. He says, the older I got, the more frequently my mother and I would push each other to the precipice of what we actually needed to say. Only to back off just before either of us was forced to get more specific than vague allusions to feelings and questions. But this only meant that the unanswered questions became ever more loaded. I wonder how many of our mother's fears, starting from the moment they know who we are, are tied to thinking that we will eventually die of HIV. Joan's poetic nature is present throughout this story. He's a poet, a former educator himself, and I was able to identify with his life in a very unique way. However, where Joan's life takes a turn into territory that is not often discussed with much nuance in Black queer spaces, especially especially on Twitter, um, is his relationships with white men. Um, I had to assume, based on the information given, that most every man he had a sexual relationship with in this memoir that he stated was non-Black. From his experiences earlier in life and his own anger and desire to be desired, Saeed Jones presents readers with an unfiltered account of his recurring hookups with a white man who he only refers to as the botanist. And we've all come across this type. Um, they love BBC, but don't think that Black Lives Matter. Someone read this chapter and definitely had a regrettable flashback to the time when they didn't pull out after being called the N-word. Even so, these tales and how we fight for our lives let men who have had these experiences know that they are not alone. The unresolved trauma that lands us in certain situations and causes us to seek out unhealthy sexual relationships and in turn 
prevent us from leaving is not as simple as some make it out to be. Navigating through unimaginable loss, somehow Saeed Jones was able to find some light at the end of the tunnel. And this loss comes in different forms. The physical loss of his mother through death, the loss of his relationship with his grandmother, and the loss of his desire to stay in one place. Grief comes in waves and does not end in a set amount of time. Where Jones is able to discover his balm is in the company of someone who has experienced the same thing. How We Fight For Our Lives was able to center me for a moment. Over the past year, I've experienced a series of losses that have honestly left me numb and searching for direction. I resonate with a passage where he describes himself floating in water and he says, my arms were so heavy, maybe I fought long enough. Maybe I could just let go, stop fighting and ease down into the sea. Grief feels like you're drowning, screaming while millions are happily swimming around you and no words are coming from your mouth. My mother, see, we all have a mother's story, texts me a link right after my grandmother's death last year, and it was titled 64 Things I Wish Someone Had Told Me About Grief. Things 21 through 25 just about summed up where this process of going through grief has gone for me. 21, the pain of loss is a reflection of love and you never regret loving as hard as you can. 22, grief can make you question your faith. 23, grief doesn't come in five neat stages. Grief is messy and confusing. 24, grief makes you feel like you are going crazy. And 25, grief can make you question your life, your purpose, and your goals. And that isn't always a bad thing. Unfortunately, Fighting seems to be an ever constant theme in the life of black queer folks. Fighting for our lives from the moment we're born, fighting for a place in the world, fighting for love, fighting for acceptance, fighting for the right to live. Will it ever be worth it? Maybe, just maybe. I hope that you enjoyed this review of How We Fight For Our Lives by Saeed Jones. I would definitely recommend this book to anyone who just wants to read about somebody else's experiences. And I know that you'll be able to identify with at least something that Saeed Jones mentions in this memoir. Check out the description box below for all links uh, to the actual review that I wrote for this novel on tobeblackandlove.com and also links to purchase this book. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, you are loved.